Hello, this is Sue from dragoncreations.co.uk and today we're going to do dragon scales but this is just stage one. So, numbers. Um, I mixed up 100 grams which is 52A, 48B, mine's a one-to-one -one resin. Then I decanted 20 grams of pigment tint and that was red. Sig one red, but uh, five drops. Then I decanted 20 grams of clear one. Then I decanted 20 grams of mica one, which is craft geek red. Then I decanted 20 grams of mica two, which is uh, black and then I've decanted 20 grams of clear too. Right I've just given my moulds a light spray of alcohol. Right we're back. These are nice and dry but I am not going to demould them and I will show you why. What I am going to do is with my alcohol I'm going to spray the back of the mould And with a bit of tissue, I'm going to give it a really good clean. I'm not going to press too hard because I don't want the, in, the pieces inside to be demoulded at all. I'm going to go around the edges as well with my alcohol. Make sure there's no resin sticking to it so they're nice and clean. And then... I'm going to spray a light alcohol and I'm going to put these inside just like that and then I'm just going to gently press the mould around the edge of the mould to make sure it's got nice contact and you shouldn't be able to move it at all. That's the reason we haven't taken them in because taken them out because we need them for support. Okay, so they are now quite firmly stuck. Hopefully they're centered. If not, it's not perfection, so okay. Now I have made up 200 grams. And that's 105 of A and 95 of B. And I decanted 100 grams. And I've put a tablespoon, well, a spoon, my spoon, a, sp uh, a heap spoon. It didn't go up the handle. It's just a normal heap spoon of black mica. Then I also added some chunky holographic glitter just to give it a bit of bling and I did the same with the red that we used that was a heap spoon of the red and I just added some chunky glitter to that as well so I'm going to take my sticks out just for the moment Okay, I'm going to make a lip on my cups and I'm going to make a pattern. I'm going to pour on top of the mould. So if I do it in this one, you might be able to see it first. So I'm just going to squiggly wiggly, red there, black there, black there, red there, a bit more black. I'm just going to do that until it's full. Then I shall do the same with this one. Red there, black there, black there, red there, 
squiggly wiggly. So basically you're just freehanding until your moulds are full. I think I've been a little bit ambitious with my numbers so instead of 200 I would go for 180 I reckon. No, 170. Yeah, because these are full now. I'm just going to check, make sure they're domed. Yeah, they are lovely and full. So I've got enough left to... I always have moulds handy if I have anything left to make a little pot. So, where can you see that? Because I don't want to move these. No, I'm going to have to move them. There. There you go, you can see that. Right, okay, let's get put some black in. So yeah, I was a little bit ambitious with my numbers. So in the D mould, I will give you the ratios for, let's say, this pot takes 30, which I know it does. Let's see how much of this pot I can fill up and then I will know exactly how much to tell you. So that's the black. Right, 170. <laughs> it's going to be 170. So in the D mould, I will give you the, the uh, split ratio for 170 for the one-to-one -one resin. Never mind, I've got a little sparkly pot now. Sorry about the scraping. Now, I'm going to say 160, because these are really domed. Yeah, so you don't have any overflowing, because these are really nicely domed. And if your surface isn't flat, you might have some problems. So I will say 160. And two seconds, and I will get you the calculation for 160. Right, 160 is 76A, no sorry, scrap that, 84A, 76B, that's 160, and that is, that would be perfect, they'll be domed slightly, and they'll be nice and full, and you won't have a pretty pot, <laughs> so I made up, two, I made up 200, which was too much, and my pot takes 30 and these are really domed so 160 will give you a nice level surface 
okay so i will leave these cover these and leave these to set overnight and i shall see you in the demold and we shall see what we've made so i'll see you later right they're nice and dry and i've just demolded my little pot which has turned out really well most come for a visit so just break the seal and if you have a little bit of overpour which i have on this one just run um i've got a cocktail stick that i've just smoothed down the end to focus so it's not spiky and i just ran it along the top of the mold the inside mold just to take off um i'll just show you it's a little bit like that that was just holding it in place so you just break the seal bend the corner slightly and it pops out and then because we're taking that overflow out just break the seal and there so that's fine nice and clean and again with this one just bend the corner slightly oh I didn't mean to show you that bit <laughs> not yet anyway and then just pull that bit out so we shall get rid of them and okay so that's the inside it's going to be matte because the um, bottom of the mold is matte but you can always just put a nice really thin top coat in there so they've turned out quite pretty and now dun 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 let's see how these turned out oh now that's really interesting <laughs> I don't know what happened there all the crackle and beautiful and then stop and then crackle and beautiful but it fits in and with the gap of the mold you've got room to put feet on it oh and again in that bit there and it fits in and what I've done is I'm going to show you something now is I did a round one exactly the same way I mean I put um, a bit of that stringy stuff still I put little round rubber feet on the back of all my coasters and they come in like a sheet so I've saved the sheet backing and because I didn't want this one to stand proud I put it in there and it's nice and flush which I put to the side you can see how flush that is uh, so that's why we didn't fill our mould right to the top, because, uh, let me find one for you, I think I've got one here, yes, so, tip it out, so if I put, stick that on the back of there, and then put it in there, and it's, I could even get proper four feet on there, I think, let's see if, uh, See, this is how I buy them. They come in a sheet and you take the little feet off and I put them on the back of the coasters. The only thing is they do stink when you first open them. Oh, it's an awful plasticky smell. But if you leave them open, sort of next to a window, the smell goes quite quickly. So let's put proper feet on this one. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. Look how flush that is. You see? So, yep, by put, just putting that amount in, we've got a coaster within a coaster. So I'm going to do this again, but I'm also going to put another twist on it. So, and as I say, I've done a round one, 
so I shall do because this was my very first um, attempt at doing it so I thought um, I'll have a go if we can put squares in we can take squares out so I did it with my round one because I know the exact measurements of this and I was quite confident with the uh, the little round mould I've got. Again, it's from the Let's Resin um, small coaster set that you get a um, coaster holder with and it's just off Amazon. So I thought, yes, I shall do that. And then I moved on to the squares and then I'm going to do squares again I'm going to put another twist on it, so you shall have to stay subscribed and wait for the next video, because I've got an idea. You know I like to experiment, but I've got an idea of how I can put a twist on this as well. So yes, okay, so this is the demold and it's all nice and flush. Um, I would say 160 though, but in the next video I will make sure the measurements are exact for you. So yes, I shall.